When I was a young boy, I used to enjoy watching my father fish. I suppose it was inevitable that I too would follow in my father's footsteps when I got older, and that I did. I worked as a fisherman for 40 years. I suppose the years drifted by quickly, and it's only now at the age of 87 that I pause to reflect on the past. I feel now is the right time to come forward about an experience that I had at age 19 in the summer of 1952. Me and two of my fellow colleagues were on our boat, pitching our rods off the Cornwall coast. We were looking for red salmon as we were getting a handsome check for providing a local butcher with fish. It was a hot summer day and we had a few beers on the boat. Our t-shirts were off and we were enjoying waving at a group of young ladies who were having a picnic on the coast. We didn't know the girls, but they beckoned us to come and join them for their picnic. It was certainly enticing for a 19-year-old, since I had been working as a fisherman apprentice for around five years at the time, and it was very rare that I ever encountered the opposite sex. The ladies continued beckoning us. The smell of their vanilla perfume seemed to gather and cluster around our boat. Its soft, feminine overtones were almost hypnotic and filled me with youthful desire. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I laugh now as I write this, for a wise old man once said, the devil take the woman, and that following your youthful desire leads, well, you know. What occurred on that day was nothing but sheer madness, sheer terror and mesmerism. The other folks on board decided to jump overboard and swim towards the sand and walk up to meet the girls. I told them that it seemed like a good idea and encouraged them to go. As soon as they jumped over, the sky became very gray and it started to rain heavily. I watched as they struggled against an increasingly erratic wave. I glimpsed up at the girls and could see them jumping up and scurrying away, clearly frightened of the oncoming shower or perhaps reluctant to actually meet the guys. I began to think that it seemed too good to be true or if it was some kind of trick. The skies continued to pour, and I noticed that my friends were struggling heavily. Then I witnessed a horror that makes my hands shake with fright. A large serpent-like creature shot out from the depths of the ocean, long, over 15 feet long, with a huge body, green and slimy, just like a sea snake. It had fangs which looked to be a foot long, and its head was protruding about the same size as a human head. It was a disturbing sight, and just the memory alone terrifies me. The guys in the water noticed the serpent, and I noticed that it seemed to be hunting them. It was jagging at my friend, and then I saw signs of blood. I grabbed something nearby and threw it out in the direction which the serpent was now thrashing around, jumping in and out of the ocean, like a dolphin, but viciously and with clear intent to wound. The creature then turned around and noticed me and bolted towards me through the water. Its tail was huge. It shot up and tried to wound my face, but I managed to block it with an oar in the boat. It seemed like it was intent on striking at me, its fangs thrashing and hungry for human flesh it seemed. I was absolutely petrified beyond belief. I had never witnessed such a creature before and at only 19 years old, I was still a virgin of the sea. Even my father had never heard anything like this or encountered anything. I attempted to wrestle with the beast, but I began to feel I was doomed. The serpent-like creature managed to mount the boat and was now facing me directly. The boat capsized slightly and seawater poured in my feet where we're now soaking. I knew that I was going to die, but I knew I would not give up without a fight. I continued kicking frantically at the beast, hoping that if I made contact with it, it would retreat in fear. But this beast looked just as vicious as it did hungry, and eventually I managed to hit it slightly with the oar, but the boat was now nearly underwater. All at once, suddenly, the storm had ceased overhead, and this serpent-like creature descended back into the water. Things became still and calm and I felt it was now safe to swim back, and as I did, my friends were nowhere to be seen. I found them later, 
and they had deep wounds and cuts from where this creature had attacked them, nearly almost bleeding out. When we told others of our experience, nobody believed us, but possibly some biologists felt it could have been a mysterious underwater creature undiscovered by science at the time. Whatever it was, it was terrifying, and I was glad to have never encountered it again during my fishing career. Look, I know it might sound outlandish, but this is a story that happened to me much when I was younger, and I haven't had anything like it since. I know there are crazy tales of sea experiences out there, and well, this is mine. Just remember that almost every fisherman out there has his or her own. Hi, what lurks beneath. Let me introduce myself. I'll go by the name David, and I am a primary school teacher from Northern Ireland. I came across your channel as I recently had a disturbing experience that has been wreaking havoc on my mental health. I've been off work now for one year, and don't see that I can reasonably go back at the moment. Not just because of COVID, but because of what I saw and witnessed during the summer of back in 2018. Every year, the teachers take the primary seven class, whom are all aged around 11 to a seaside resort. It's always such a fun and memorable weekend, and it's all to wish them a farewell before they go into secondary school. The weekend is always filled with all sorts of activities and fun. The kids love it, and so do the teachers. I have thoroughly enjoyed attending the annual trip for the last 10 years, but that was until 2018. I was the designated officer for a group of kids, and there was about five of them in total, and it was my job to take them out on a short canoeing excursion. This was just off the coast of Cork, and to say it was picturesque would be a complete understatement. I remember thinking how lucky I was to be Irish, and how blessed I was to have a job that allowed me to explore such beautiful spots and get paid for it all at the same time. We all took our canoe boats out, and all of us had life jackets. We also all had whistles in case we got into any kind of trouble. Most of the kids had been canoeing before, so had a knack for it. But there was one kid who was on the spectrum, autism, and had poor hand-eye coordination who struggled to use his oar. He was high-functioning, so he wasn't a total vegetable. I had to help him and spend a little extra time with showing him the technique, but he eventually got the hang of it. He was just a little slower, but we all adjusted our speed to accommodate for him. There was a very small strand where we were sailing to and intended to stop for a little snack. I kept some juice in my backpack and some biscuits and fruit so all the kids would be satisfied and be fit for sailing back. The currents in the water started getting a little shaky and some of the kids said they were struggling to row. It was a bit worrying, but I could see that they weren't far from reaching the shore. The other kid who had been struggling, Dennis, was really starting to have issues. His oar had fallen into the water and sank, and he was beginning to panic. I told the others to row to shore, whilst I tied a bow onto Dennis's boat and pulled him with me. When I reached him, I noticed something large and green, like the shape of a cobweb almost under the water. I squinted downwards, but just brushed it off as some weird type of seaweed or something. But still, as I tied the bow around Dennis's boat, this thing kept encircling. It also seemed to pulsate, getting bigger, then smaller. I just hoped it wasn't a jellyfish, or some dangerous sea animal. At that moment, as the water grew deathly still, I turned back to see the other kids and make sure they had reached safely ashore. As I squinted, a large serpent-like snake shot up from the sea and bit my forehead. It had a large fang that was sharp and now coated me with my own blood. I panicked like hell and shouted to Dennis to hop into my boat, but he was panicking even more now. This creature continued to emerge from the water like lightning bolts and shoot its way across my head, attempting to bite me. It was the most frightening experience of my life. I was being attacked on water with a very vulnerable child, but on top of that, I had never seen such an aggressive sea creature. 
I had also been bitten and could already feel my forehead expanding, no doubt as a reaction to whatever venom was released in this bite. This snake, whatever it was, wasn't very large, probably the size of a normal rattler, but it was enough to be aggressive and hostile, and I had no idea how venomous it could have been. From what I understand, sea snakes are extremely venomous. I cursed and panted. Eventually, I managed to get the bow on Dennis's boat and started sailing like hell. This creature shot up again, its eyes like slits, yellow and soulless, but speaking a clear fury and intent to kill me. I did the best I could to try and avoid it, but to no avail. The canoe boat shook and almost nearly capsized with the impact. Eventually, as we reached the shore, the beast seemed to abandon its endeavor and it left us in peace. Small but deadly. As I carried Dennis out of the boat, he was coated in a cold sweat. The rest of the kids ran up to us and hugged us. They had seen it all where we were traumatized. All of the kids were white with shock and needed to get water and food immediately. We called an ambulance and told them what had happened. I got first aid and got my wound dressed. Luckily, the venom wasn't lethal, but I have to admit, the venom of that incident has lived on in my psyche every day since then. Every moment, every day, I feel the terror and stress I felt in that boat as I fought for my life and that of the little kid entrusted to my care. I sincerely feel I will never go back on that boat again and am reluctant to even go near the water. The last I heard of the kids, two had dropped out of school and were being homeschooled for the time being, and Dennis had completely retreated into himself. Obviously, what we saw had a scaring effect on all of us. I hope that in writing about this experience, you can maybe enlighten me and inform me if other such creatures exist and have been sighted by others in the sea nearby. I know it was some sort of sea serpent, nothing crazy like Leviathan or anything, but I've never ran into a sea serpent so aggressive before. I mean, this thing was intent on bringing me down, so much so that I almost capsized our canoe. Anyway, I would like to thank you all for all the hard work you do. It is truly appreciated. I found something the other day that I couldn't quite explain. I don't know if it was some kind of hybrid fish or what, but it scared me. I was out of my family's timeshare for two weeks last summer. My husband worked a lot of hours during the year, so he decided to get one of these timeshares and try it out. It was a very nice place, but something was wrong with it. Well, nothing was wrong with the house itself, but there was something wrong with the lake that was next to it. My kids wanted to go swimming in it, but I didn't. The lake had an unnatural green hue to it. I knew that if the kids showered off after getting out of the lake, they would be fine. I was definitely not getting in it though. I had just dyed my hair and was not about to let it turn to a moldy green color. I have three kids, one that is 13, one that is 9, and one that's only 3, and I didn't want to have her in the lake with her delicate skin. Something so large could be bad for her, especially if there weren't any baby stairs like we had in our pool back home. After we had gotten settled in the house and put away our things, I figured it would be okay to let the kids run out to the lake and play. I wanted them back in time for dinner and told them that, but I was unaware of what was going to happen that night. I put a little water from a bucket and filled Jamie's kiddie pool. It was only up to her waist, so she would be okay in there by herself. The water wasn't clear, but she would be okay for a little while. I told Julian to keep an eye on them while I went inside to start cooking dinner. I could see them from the kitchen window by the sink, so I could keep an eye on them if I needed to. After 20 minutes, I went outside to check on Jamie and was going to bring her, but she was crying about not wanting to get out, so I left her there while I went back to finish making dinner. After I had finished, I went outside and yelled for the kids to come inside. They got out of the water, and one of them was crying. She called for me, and I ran to her. 
I saw that she had these orange things all over her. They were the size of ladybugs, and they were orange. I tried pulling them on her, and with much strength and effort, was able to pull one off. It was orange on top, but it had legs, or teeth, in her. I couldn't tell what it was, but when I pulled it off of her, it was more in her than just on her. It had seemed to stick itself inside of her skin, and just like a leech, was drinking her blood. I saw that they were on my others, too. I picked up my littlest one from the pool, frantically checked her for any of those things. One was on her, but it didn't get past her swimsuit. I brushed it off of her and stepped on it. I took them inside with me and told my husband to help. He was yelling and wondering what happened. I got them carefully cleaned out with a knife, but he insisted that we go to urgent care. Those things left red marks all over their bodies, and it didn't seem like they took too much blood, but I still thought we should hurry. I looked down at all the things I took off the kids, and they had shrunk, like how grapes turn into raisins. I thought that we should take a few to show to the doctors, just so they could identify what they were, but I couldn't. When I tried picking them up, they just broke into little pieces. On the way to urgent care, my oldest started passing out. I almost worry if those things took too much blood. We got out, and my husband ran into the building with her in his arms, asking the front desk if there was anything they could do. I brought Jamie in my arms as I walked with Julian inside. Thankfully, the doctor saw them immediately. I told the doctor what had happened, and he said my oldest would be okay. All she needed was water. He said that those things were probably leeches. I tried describing to him that they weren't, that they were something else. Through all my persisting, he just told me that I needed to stop making up stories so he could get to his other patients. All he did was give me a prescription to get an ointment that would help the kids with the marks that were on their skin. It took a while, but the ointment eventually made their skin heal. But it left scars. I told my husband that we shouldn't be part of the timeshare anymore, and that we should leave so the kids couldn't go to the lake. I don't know what those things were, but they definitely were not leeches. Be careful of any new lakes you visit, because I never heard of these things before, but they like to be in water that's very foggy and green, just like that lake was, a very unnatural green. I should have trusted my gut instinct to begin with. I just felt like something was off to begin. Last year, I went vacationing out to Lake Michigan. I never liked vacationing with my family. I had one of those families that always wanted to do everything together. I never really fit into that structure of a family. I'm just a social outcast, both in the world and in my family. So any time I had alone to myself were the only times I felt like I could actually breathe. So, when we went to Michigan, I thought it was going to be the same thing. And in a sense, it was, but I never thought it would turn out the way it did. I turned 14 the week after the vacation, and all I wanted to do was get some room to breathe. And the first time in my life, I had finally gotten that. When we went, my dad had gotten me my room in the hotel we were staying at. It was right next door to my parents, but it was the first time I felt like I actually had my own space. I could watch whatever TV I wanted to, I could have time to read my book that I had been trying to get time to read for months. It was something so small, but to have my own space, my own privacy, it was different. In the room, they had a few flyers for things to do to the nearby lake area. I flipped through some of them, and one caught my eye was an underwater adventure. It was similar to something like an aquatic park. The next morning, I told my dad if we can go to the place that I had seen in the flyers, and he said I can go by myself, and that I was old enough. The place that they were going to wasn't far, so he agreed. They dropped me off at the lakeside aquatic area. I looked around, seeing the normal things that a place like that would have. They had booths for little kid games and other things, and I walked to the room where they had, and I was amazed by it. It was a large area, with a big window facing into a side of the lake that they had divided just for the park. It was an amazing sight. 
We watched as somebody from above. The gigantic area dumped large amounts of some kind of fish feed in the water. What I thought was interesting, though, was that there was a fish swimming toward the bottom of the lake that was not interested in the feeding party at the top. It was a black fish, and it was swimming slowly. I couldn't tell if it had eaten already or not, but I got close to the glass and saw that it wasn't a fish at all. It looked as if it was some kind of decoy fish. It had sunk towards the bottom, and something was creeping up on it. Some kind of creature caught it and began biting into it. It looked like some kind of man, but he was biting into it. I was so confused about what was going on. It saw that I was still watching it and swam to the corner where I was. It wasn't a man at all. It looked like some sort of aquatic humanoid. I don't know if what I was looking at was real or not, but it looked like it was staring right back at me. It had almost a human face, but if it was if it was alien because the way it looked at me. It had the shape of a human, but it kind of looked like an amphibious kind of creature. Its eyes were completely black. I don't know if somebody was messing with me, so I left the room to talk to somebody that worked there. I asked them about the fish man in the viewing room, and they said they didn't know what I was talking about. I looked for somebody else to find, but nobody was around, so I went back to this viewing room. Keep in mind, this is a really small room, and I was the only one in there at the time. I looked around for it again, and it was swimming behind some fish. It grabbed it with its webbed hand and took a bite out of it. I could see that it had extremely sharp teeth because it had torn through that fish in no time. I thought that it was amazing. I guess someone else had seen the creature that I was talking about too, and one of the feeders above the viewing room was looking for it. They had a long pole in the water searching for it. It had an underwater camera on it looking in the water. The fish man saw and swam off. He swam towards the other side of the divided area and squeezed through the hole in the net where the small fish went in and out of. To this day, I don't know what it is I saw or if anybody else had seen anything like it, but it seemed like it had been in that area for a long time. It could still be out there and nobody would know. If it knew to hide from the camera, then it must have been there before. It must have been going in and out of the park I told my parents about it when they picked me up, and they laughed at me, making up silly things from all the books that I had read. They didn't believe me, but I know somebody had to. I know somebody, at least one person who had seen what I had, could just believe me. It couldn't have just been me. I'm sure you're no stranger to terrifying, large and harrowing fish found out at sea by fishermen, just like many of the details you describe in your accounts listed on your channel. Well, I too have an interesting story about a very large, what I'll call an unknown fish, while I was cage diving with great white sharks off the coast of Mexico many years back, at around 2002 to be exact. I'll spare you all the boring details about going out there on the boat, who I was with, getting suited up, and getting into the cage because that's pretty redundant. But anyway, great white shark diving is something that's amazing, and if you ever get the chance to do it, it's quite an adrenaline thrill. In fact, I was loving it and having the time of my life. I'm not really what you'd call an adrenaline junkie or even a thrill seeker, but this was something that I had to cross off my bucket list at least once. Anyway, here's where things become crazy. So I'm in the cage, watching these beautiful and large majestic fish swim all around me, knowing I'm literally within 20 feet of a man-eating predator, or as Hollywood portrays them to be. There's about three of them swimming around me, and that's when I notice their sudden disinterest of swimming around me, if that makes any sense. They kind of start to trail off towards the other directions, out into the open sea. And as I begin to sit there confused, wondering, why they're no longer swimming around me. I begin to see that deep below me, underneath me, a very, very large shape is beginning to emerge closer to the surface. Now, at first, I thought this might be a whale, but this shape, whatever it was, never fully surfaced enough that I could really make out vivid details. All I could really tell you 
is that it was a very, very large dark shadow of something, and it seemed to be moving. Maybe it was a craft of some kind. It's hard to say. It looked very long, like if you were to take a sperm whale and enlarge it even more. And I'm terrible at describing things, but the best way I can describe it is it was some large marine animal, or fish, or something that was much, much larger than any great white that I've ever seen. But again, I can't give you great details, because it never fully surfaced enough, even in the water, that I could make out what it was. What I can only assume, looking back on the event, is that this thing approaching us made the great white sharks flee. Now, you tell me what lurks beneath. What's out there in the ocean that the sheer presence of a fish makes great white sharks even flee? So, that's something that's left for another day of mystery. And I'm not kidding when I say that the shape of this thing was massive. It engulfed the entire underneath of my cage. And again, it was just a black mass. I couldn't tell what it was. But it seemed to go in front of me, below me, and behind me. For maybe only a moment or two before submerging back down into the depths to where I couldn't see it anymore. After that, the shark stayed gone, and once I went back up to the boat, I didn't tell them what happened. I only mentioned how the sharks just seemed to lose interest, and that was it. It didn't really scare me as much as it makes me think about all the mysteries the ocean holds. I feel foolish for saying this, but I think I saw something that might have been out of place, whatever that means. I was at my grandfather's lake house out in the woodland area of Louisiana last summer when I had an encounter with some kind of creature, or I guess it would be a lake creature. I know that sounds crazy, like some sort of Hollywood movie plot, but I promise you, the truth is stranger than fiction. I couldn't fully understand or describe what it was, so I'm hoping somebody can help me identify what it might be. And after doing some researching, you seem to have a series about lake and sea creatures, which just might be my ticket to getting a resolution. My dad and I have gone fishing a few times during the summer every year to fish out on the lake. It was just like any other trip this time. We got our gear together, did our traditional cola pop chug and rode out into the lake. Normally, I will row around till Dad is satisfied and we have found the right spot. I hooked my bait onto the hook and whisked it into the water. Dad got a bite almost immediately. He pulled out a three-inch trout, which would explain how he caught it so fast. See, baby adolescent fish aren't smart enough to stay away from your bait, yet even know what it is, so they're easier to catch. We don't take our phones out on the boat, so I can't ever accurately judge what time it was, besides looking at the sun. I would say maybe 45 minutes after he caught his, I finally had a bite. It definitely was a fighter. After relentlessly pulling and leading it in, I was starting to pull it out of the water with a larger fish snagged it from me, hook and all. I hooked my line again and threw it back into the water. I don't know what it was, but larger fish always love taking my smaller bites. Luckily, I had another bite a little while later, and I was determined to not let this one get away from me. I let it lead around for a little while before starting to reel it in hard. I waited long enough to seem as if it caught the fish off guard. I pulled it in very quickly and was pulling it out of the water when I saw another fish trying to snag it from me. I pulled it out quickly but that didn't stop the other fish from jumping out of the water to bite it as I pulled it away. It wasn't much larger than the 11 fish I pulled out of the water, but it definitely was a predator. It landed back on the water, and oddly enough, it stared at me for a minute before swimming back under the water. It was a pale blue fish with weird yellow and brown eyes. It didn't look like it had scales, but almost looked like it had skin. Thinking about it, I'm not quite sure it was a fish at all. Its head resembled a fish, but it didn't look like a fish that I had ever seen before. I told Dad that I had to use the restroom, and that I thought I was done for the day. I didn't tell him what I had seen, but I think the lake and the heat were messing with my head. 
It was quite hot out, and I think I just needed to lie down to get rid of the ominous headache that I was having. We went out again the next day. I chose a different spot on the lake for us, just in case whatever I saw yesterday happened to still be there. It took a while for either of us to get a bite on our lines, and whatever happened to the fish must have happened overnight. I told my dad that we must have caught all the fish yesterday, and that the lake was out for the summer. He laughed at me, and said we should find another spot because, after being in the spot for the same two hours and not finding anything, it was considered bad luck. So, I rode over to a spot near the edge of the lake, on the farther side of the lake, that faced the woodlands. Not much activity was happening, until my father got a fish. I don't know what he caught, but it was very large. He was losing his grip of the pole, when I held onto the pole and the fish came out of the water. It must have been a 16 inch fish. Something like that was enormous, but that isn't what surprised me. What did was the gigantic bite that was taken out of the side of it. It was so heavy because we were fighting with something that was already eating it. I looked around in the water and I could see faint glowing yellow brown eyes. Then I realized it was the same thing from the other day. My dad got kind of spooked after pulling that thing out, so he decided to call it. We rode back to shore. We had to go to the store to find something for dinner, since we hadn't caught any fish that day, except that half-eaten one that we pulled out of the lake. Dad said he wasn't getting as much excitement out of fishing this year. I told him if tomorrow didn't go any better, then I would be okay with heading home early. The next morning, I woke up early and went out to the lake to sit on the dock. I watched the water as the sun rose. I didn't see any fish in the water from where I was. Normally, you can come out here and see the whole lake move as if it were an orchestra of watercolors. Not today though. The lake was still, as if all the fish were gone. I looked across to the area where we were yesterday and I saw a fawn coming out of the woods towards the edge of the water. I watched it as it stumbled across the ground and dipped its head to the water to drink from it. It was so peaceful until something long and pale came out of the water and bit onto its neck, pulling it in. I stood up frantically, looking around to see if it made it out. But after ten minutes, I could assume what happened. I just sighed and went back inside. I walked into the kitchen to find Dad drinking his coffee. I told him about the lake, and that there were no fish, that they probably had already moved on already, and there wasn't any use staying another day to fish. I didn't tell him what happened to the fawn though. He was disappointed, but he knew I was right. We packed up all of our stuff and loaded it onto our truck, and just then in that moment, I turned to look back at the lake one last time, and I swear, just like out of some sort of nightmare. I swore I could have saw its faintly glowing eyes still staring at me from underneath the water. And then something far more horrifying had happened in that very moment. I heard some swooshing around, like something heavy under the dock, and that's when it came into view. The body, or should I say half-eaten body of the dead fawn from earlier, came out from floating underneath the docks into view. There really wasn't much left of it other than a massive heap of torn up eaten flesh and a leg or two, which is the only real way you could even discern it was still a fawn, or was a fawn at one point. It's safe to say that me and my father don't go fishing out there anymore. My parents died in a car accident when I was extremely young. I was probably only a year or so old, I was involved in it, in fact, but was luckily spared. I don't have any memory of it, or any memory of my parents. My only frame of reference for them is pictures, and it might sound bad, but none of them exactly rang a bell for me, or gave me the innate feeling of this is my family. So, while I did feel bad for them in the sense that their lives were taken so soon in such a violent manner. To me, they were just strangers, and I didn't particularly miss them. 
Still, sometimes I wondered what my life would have been like had they made it out okay, because it would have been entirely different. After the accident, I was taken care of by my grandfather, and I was raised with an unconventional lifestyle. He was divorced and estranged from my grandmother, and he didn't have any siblings. So, for most of my life, it was really just me and him, and whoever happened to pass through. That wasn't the odd part, though. My grandfather was a long-retired Navy veteran, but his love of the water stuck with him. I had spent most of my childhood alternating between staying in hotels and boats and traveled down all sorts of waterways in the United States and Canada. Although my granddad was technically retired, he took on all sorts of jobs at ports just in order to maintain a source of income and probably to keep his sanity too. He was an active man and hated staying in one place all the time, which is why nobody stuck with us in the long term. When I was 12, we were down in Oklahoma. It was the beginning of July, and although I was used to all sorts of weather conditions at this point, the heat and humidity that came down upon us was damn near unbearable. At first, I tried to sleep in a motel bed, but at that point, I'd grown so accustomed to sleeping in boats that I had trouble falling asleep unless I could feel water rocking the floor back and forth. It was like the opposite of seasickness. It was too still, too motionless. My grandfather got fed up with tossing and turning and allowed me to go back to the docks so I could sleep in the boat, figuring I was old enough to be left alone at this point. It was still uncomfortably hot and humid, but the rocking of the boat lulled me to sleep. I was a glorified baby who needed his cradle. However, after some time, I was awoken by the sound of a swishing in the water nearby. I assumed it had to be a fish, but the noises sounded far too heavy and forceful for that. I went outside and went to the side of the boat where most of the sounds were coming from. I checked over the railing and through the dim light that the moon provided, I could make out the silhouette of what appeared to be a massive octopus sitting next to the boat, to the point where the top of its head actually poked out of the water. You could imagine my confusion in that very moment. Even if I wasn't raised on lakes and seas, any kid would know that octopi aren't freshwater creatures. There was no reason I should be seeing one in the wild in the middle of America. As soon as I leaned in to try and get a better look at it, it had swam away in the blink of an eye, the force of its movement rocking the boat a bit more some moments later. I wanted to go and tell my grandfather about my discovery, but I didn't want to wake him up. So I waited until he came back and got me the next morning. We went to dine in a small restaurant where I brought up what I had spotted. Before he even had a chance to say his piece, the people in the next table chimed in. The person who spoke up first was an older man. He said that the octopus, or that perhaps it was an entire species, plagued lakes and rivers across the state. He blamed it for the drowning of his black lab some years prior. My grandfather, skeptical, and before I knew it, a full-blown debate was occurring in the restaurant. Apparently, townsfolk here were pretty divided on whether or not this thing was real. I guess it was like another Bigfoot. Some people believe, and others don't. I was certain of what I saw though, but my grandfather insisted that it was a dream. He said he'd seen far too many things on the water to believe something as silly as a massive freshwater octopus in the middle of the United States and nowhere else. In all fairness, the debate never got out of hand, for the most part. It just was a friendly banter and people placing bets, but it did definitely get noisy enough to the point where the owner had asked us to quiet down. Since it was the morning of the 4th of July, after we left, 
we found the entire town was pretty busy doing things like selling fireworks, food, decorations, and jewelry. We spent the rest of the morning exploring the shops and markets, and I didn't bother to try and bring up the octopus again. As afternoon came, we headed back out towards the lake, where people were out on their boats and swimming, and the sky was filled with the sounds of radios playing and people laughing. Nobody had even noticed a little boy struggling to keep his head above the water, but I did. I shouted that he was drowning and needed help. My grandfather dove in and swam after him, and once he got to him, I screamed as he was pulled down under as well. By now, more people around me noticed what was going on and ran over to help. A few moments later, my grandfather resurfaced with the boy. Once they finally caught their breath, the boy started to bawl. One man took the boy from my grandfather's arms and they took him onto a boat. My grandfather climbing aboard along with them as he was likely too exhausted to swim back to shore. I tried my best to see what was going on but all I could hear was the boy crying about how somebody or something had kept trying to drag him under. At first, this warranted a search from a bunch of people to see if another child had drowned and grabbed onto the boy in hopes to save themselves. However, when nobody was to be found, it turned into a witch hunt to find the responsible party. They figured some other kid was trying to be a prankster and scare the boy but took it too far. My grandfather made it ashore by now, and he did not seem to be in the mood to talk. In fact, he appeared to be entirely disconnected from the moment. I don't know what to say or do, so I just watched a few games of beanbags until the sunset, when I made s'mores with the other kids as the adults prepared the fireworks showing. The people who were pissed about the person who tried to drown the boy were almost all drunk by now and the memory already seemed to be shoved in the back of their minds. I could tell something was still haunting my grandfather though. When night fell, it came time to light up the fireworks. My grandfather and I sat back in our boat to watch. After the show, he finally decided to speak up. He said that when he rescued the boy, the force that pulled him under the water was so strong that he knew it could not have been a person, and that when he kicked the perpetrator so that it would let go of the boy, its body felt squishy and slimy, almost like jelly. Upon boarding the boat, after rescuing the boy, he swore he noticed the imprint of suction cups wrapped around the boy's ankle, but didn't say anything as he was in too much shock. My grandfather could be a very stubborn man but for the most part, he knew when to admit that he was wrong. He said he changed his mind and believed me. Upon hearing his story, I was a little scared to sleep on the boat that night, but he decided to stay with me just to make me feel better. I swore that I still heard the swishing and can feel sporadic hard waves hitting the boat, but I didn't dare move or say anything as I hoped to trick the thing into thinking nobody was there. The night proceeded without incident, and by morning, we were back eating in the restaurant. People had regained interest in the near drowning that had happened the day before, and my grandfather told his piece. Some were still skeptical, but most seemed to believe him. I suppose my granddad just had a way with words. Those who were skeptical, however, did not display the same friendly banter they had the day before. They said that a kid nearly lost his life, and just because my grandfather saved him didn't mean it was okay for him to make up fairy tales and to try and romanticize or embellish the incident. My grandfather said he would never do such a thing, and soon enough, an argument had broken out between those who believed my grandfather and those who did not. The restaurant owners ultimately kicked us out for causing a ruckus, and upon exiting the building, a few of the folks around us told us that we had outstayed our welcome and needed to leave, having some food thrown at us in the process even. 
my grandfather and I knew it was pointless to try and make them believe us anymore. So, we were back in the boat within minutes. From there, we left and never returned. My grandfather and I continued to sail together for 11 more years until he passed away from a stroke. There are plenty of interesting stories from that decade, but none of them came close to being as bizarre as the one I just told you. I decided to settle down from the sailor life as it was simply not the same without him, and it took me a while to adjust to living on land, especially in only one place, but I managed to make it work. Like my granddad, I still had a love for the water and a general yearning to go back, but I feel as if I will be disappointed if I do. Regardless, despite my desires, I still find myself itching with curiosity when it comes to that creature. I wanted to see if it was still lurking in the waters, and I doubted anybody would recognize me if I returned to that lake, considering I have been an adult for quite some time now. Another part of me knows I should probably just let it be, because should I happen to come across it again, I would never be able to sleep that night without my grandfather beside me. While this doesn't exactly count as a sea monster, it should be a warning to all of those who want to swim in lakes down south that there are more things in the water that are dangerous and want to hurt you. During that summer, we spent a lot of time going all around Texas visiting different lakes, different parks, doing all sorts of outdoor recreational stuff with my family. In those two months alone we spent down there, gosh, we probably visited at least 17 different lakes so I can't exactly remember where this one was. I want to say it was outside of Houston, but I could be wrong on that. Maybe closer to Dallas. Well, 13-year-old me got that bright idea that on this day, I should go out paddleboarding all the way to see if I can make it towards the middle of the lake, which keep in mind, this is a rather large lake. I don't know how many feet it was across or anything like that, but it wasn't gigantic. I mean, it wasn't like it was a mile across or anything but you could see the other side of the lake, but it did take a little bit to get out to. So, brave 13-year-old me got my life jacket on because at the time I wasn't the best swimmer. So thinking back, I'm kind of shocked by how brave I was and how ambitious I was, but I wasn't letting any of that stop me from achieving my goal. So like I said, I got my life jacket on, got on the paddleboard, and got my paddle. And that's when I began my journey to see if I can make it as far as I could across the lake. In my head at the time, I think I just wanted to be able to reach the middle, where I believed it was the deepest, but I was hoping that maybe I could reach all the way to the other end of the lake, on the opposite shore, just to try and impress my family, because, you know, that's kind of how 13-year-olds can be sometimes. It was maybe 5-10 minutes in, and I remember thinking how hot the beating sun was then. You gotta understand that if you've never been to Texas, not only is it extremely humid in certain parts, but man, it gets hot. And as I'm paddleboarding, I'm also trying to maintain my balance because I don't want to capsize my little paddleboard. Even though life jackets will keep you from drowning, I kind of had a false sense of security. I remember paddling as hard and as fast as I can, trying to get to that middle part of the lake, just to see if I can do it. But I remember that right before I got to the middle, I looked off over to my right or my left, I can't remember, and I saw a large, long, dark shape start to come closer to the surface. Now, at the time, I was terrified of fish, for whatever weird reason, I don't remember why, but this scared me, so I started to paddle double time and try to move even faster. This shape was getting closer and closer to my paddleboard and getting closer to the surface. As it got within just a few feet from the surface, I had made out to be a long, slender fish probably about nine feet long, much longer and taller than I, which is what terrified me. It was silver with red streaks all along its body. It had a long snout. I had never seen a fish like that in my life, and I thought it was going to bite onto me and pull me deep under the water and kill me. So somehow in my panic, I managed to turn around the paddleboard completely, 180 degrees, and start going back towards my family. I don't know if it was as I was turning around or right after I just turned around. But in my panic, 
I completely lost balance on the board, and as you guess, fell right off into the water, right over where this thing was swimming. I don't know if I could accurately describe to you what it's like to be just feet away from a large fish, about twice the size of you, with what looks like to be huge teeth. So I was freaking out, and of course, because the way the paddleboard was positioned, I was having a really hard time pulling myself back onto it. My family from the shoreline was yelling at me, kind of getting concerned. Of course, I was screaming and freaking out, yelling that there was a large fish coming to eat me. Even in the chaos, I managed to pull myself back up onto the paddleboard and start swimming with my hands all the way back to the shoreline where my family was. I have no idea what happened to my paddle. I wasn't responsible at the time, and I did not keep it tight around my ankle like most people do. I paddled hard with adrenaline pumping through me, just using my hands, dog paddling, while laying on my stomach on the paddleboard. I felt lucky to be alive, and whatever this large fish was, was swimming right along with me, almost under my board, and I could see its shadow, and sometimes it would ascend really close to the surface and then back down just a little ways, just so I couldn't see it. I don't think I had ever been so scared in my life. I was terrified this thing was going to get me. Even though, after I fell in the water, and about the minute or two it took for me to get back up on my board, it never touched me or tried to bite me. In the moment, I didn't even think about that or consider any other details about what was going on. I got back to water that was shallow enough that it came right up to about my shins or mid-thigh, jumped off the board and ran up to the shore and just collapsed on the ground, partially crying, partially shaking, and I kept pointing out to the lake, saying that there's something in the water. It was huge. Well, I'm lucky that at the time, my dad and uncles were all very experienced fishermen. I explained to them what happened, and I told them what I saw and what the fish looked like. My dad just kneels down next to me and says, Son, what you saw out there, those are called alligator gar. That's when he explained to me that they really don't pose much of a threat, if at all, and the fish was probably just curious by the paddleboard and me. That was the first day that I learned about alligator gar and what they are, because before then I never even heard of such a fish. The entire south seems to be crawling with creatures that live in the water that make it dangerous to even live. Take water moccasins, for example, or alligators, or in my case, alligator gar, and even though they're not dangerous per se, they still look like they have the potential to really make you have a bad day. My findings, although disturbing, lead to more evidence of large alpha predators existing in the ocean. This was back in March of 1988. I was on one of the southern beaches in Maui. It was very early in the morning, and you could see it clear as day, but a dead whale had washed up on shore. I don't exactly know how common it is for a whale to wash up on shore when they're dead. Usually, they sink to the bottom. I don't know the exact reason for them floating onto shore, but I found this one. It looked to be a smaller whale, like it was possibly a juvenile, and I'm no expert on whales, so I couldn't tell you the breed or the type, but it's whatever whale is probably native to this area of the world. Whatever killed it, well, it must have killed it somewhat recently because there was only about half of this whale left intact. Standing there, looking at the cadaver of this thing, this whale had huge chunks of meat bitten out of it. I know sharks and other large predators of the ocean eat on whales, but to what degree, I'm not sure. But these were very large chunks. I'm talking five to six feet huge chunks. Chunks as big as me, bitten and ripped out of this whale. Whatever had killed this thing, had either bitten this thing almost in half or had just taken a few big chunks out of it and left what was the upper half of the whale. Either way, it left me spooked and terrified me to know that something that big exists in the water that eats meat. I immediately thought of a great white shark, but I don't even know if great white sharks inhibit this part of the ocean, let alone eat whales like this. And I know great white sharks get big. To what length, I don't know. But the size of bites taken out of this thing, it just didn't really feel like a great white shark to me. I felt the whole thing just to be very strange and disturbing. I've gone to Hawaii and Maui specifically many, many times since then, and have spent many mornings, early mornings, on the beach, and have never seen such a sight like that. I have seen other dead animals washed up on shore, 
like dolphins for one, or even small sharks and other various animals, but none the size of a whale with massive chunks of meat bitten and taken right out of it. I guess if you thought about it, if whales come in, and I know they're very frequent around the Maui Hawaiian area, could that potentially draw on a large shark or maybe a large alpha predator to feed? I don't know. It definitely makes me not want to go boating out on the ocean, just in the fear that I would see something that I wouldn't want to see, like one of these creatures. Before sending you this, I sat down and listened to some of your other sea monster story videos, and while I don't think I had any of those kind of sightings or experiences, this all leads me to believe that there's something larger out there in the waters that we don't know about that is probably eating on these whales. Maybe it's just my creative imagination morbidly and sadistically wanting there to be some sort of mega 60 70 foot long shark eating whales but then again i don't know the ocean holds so many secrets that we don't know about i guess the possibility of something like this could really be out there even more so here in the south pacific where the deepest part of the ocean is in the entire world anyway i'm not sure if i stumbled onto something extraordinary or if this was just nature taking its course. Either way, I thought you'd find it interesting, and it certainly makes your imagination run wild. Hi, what lurks beneath. I'm a resident at one of my local villages, and I wanted to talk about all the hard work that the rangers have done in the local countryside. I've met them a few times before, but only several years back, when we mainly had poachers and other unknown hunters in the area. Anyway, I'm writing this to tell you about some things that happened recently. As you know, the area is vast and spread out. I myself live in the town of Burt, and we are pretty rural down there. You can't even see the church piers from where I'm at. My backyard is pretty much the Alabama countryside and God's green earth is as dry as a bone this summer. Look, you're gonna think I'm crazy for telling you this, but hey, I'm just a small town girl with a good head on my shoulders. I look after my mom, my dad, and I give my life to the Lord. I ain't a bad girl. I don't even watch television, and you know, I don't wanna corrupt my mind. So I was out in the stables, and I have a few ponies. My dad got them for me for my 18th birthday. And he always tells me if I spend as much time finding a husband as I do with my horses, then I'd be doing better. But I digress. Well, I was down by the stables and my feet were resting on the hay. I decided to have a little rest on the bale. It was a hot day and I forgot my water. Now, something I should note. I live about 20 minutes from the stables, which is a long way when you're thirsty. On this particular day, the sky was a dewy blue, and I looked up at it and thought, wow, what an awesome place to be. Just as I lay there, I felt something moving from under the bale. It kind of creeped me out. But then snakes are not that strange here in Alabama, and I jumped up as a precaution. But this was no snake. Something was moving under the bale, and bits of straw were falling around, creating a mess. What was even weirder was that Jeff, my horse, got a little spooked. He was jumping and making all sorts of crazy sounds. I ran over to him as he was my priority. From under the bale, something was stirring. I was shaking and sweating a little with nerves. I looked around to see if there was anybody else nearby, but it was deserted as anything. I decided to be brave and kick the bale. I kicked it with all my might and closed my eyes a little, expecting something to jump out a bit and bite the hell out of me. But no, I opened my eyes and blinked several times. In shock, it was big, really big. It was filled with a jelly-like substance. The only thing it looked remotely like was an octopus, but it had a weird humanoid face. It scared the hell out of me. I stepped well back, as I thought I had encountered the devil himself. This thing, this creature, whatever you wanted to call it, was making a disturbing, drowning, gurgling noise. It also had tiny little feet, 
which appeared to have webbed toes that allowed it to stand no more than one foot from the ground. I felt so sick that I was scared. The creature thing slid away, just like a jellyfish in the ocean. My eyes never left until it disappeared into the grass. When I got back, I told my dad and mom, and they thought I had been smoking something out there in the barn. Now again, I'm a pretty good girl, and anybody around here can attest to that. I don't know what I saw, but this thing creeped me out. It was not human, and I have never seen an animal like this. It appeared to be very amphibious, some sort of water-like creature. The only thing I can do is look online but I found that anything like what I looked at is a kind of cryptid, I guess they're called. Anyway, all I know is I sure as hell don't want to see it again. Look, I don't know if this thing crawled out of the nearby pond or was some sort of mutated weird looking frog, but I don't want to see it again. It scared me. It looks like it belongs in the bottom of a pond and that's where it needs to stay. When I was a kid, my grandma used to keep me and my siblings over at summertime. So during the time, it was me, my two brothers, and my sister. I was the oldest that summer. In 1995, I would have been 10. Computers were just coming in, and so we played Nintendo, a lot, just for my memory. Something happened that summer which has haunted me these past 25 years. I'm a grown man now, but still it bugs me that I saw something that summer, and I don't know what it was. Grandma would have been in her 50s at the time, and was still a pretty fit and agile woman. We lived in a big country house in North Carolina at the time, and we spent most of the summer down by the lakes, jumping into the pools of water and waving at Grandma, who was reading her books and novels on the deck. I remember me and my younger brother, Kaylee, who would have been around eight at the time, were throwing a ball to each other. It was a pretty simple game of throwing back and forth. Nothing crazy exciting. Our grandma was taking pictures and looking super proud of us. I can still remember looking at my brother's super thin arms and thinking he ought to be wearing something in the lake. If anything happened to us under her watch, my mother would not be very happy. Mom was a businesswoman who spent a lot of her time in New York and she didn't really favor our grandmother watching us, who was her mother-in-law, but she let it happen regardless. Well, it was a hot summer day, like I said, and the lake was filled with children all around the neighborhood. It wasn't just us. There were teenage kids, too, playing ball, and I guess being good-for-nothing juvenile delinquents to us smaller kids. I remember all of a sudden, the lake seemed to empty, as it was just me and Kaylee, I remember looking for my grandma, and she was still there but resting with her head back. I hoped to God there wasn't some shark or something in the lake, and that's why everybody retreated. But I guess that thought was crazy, as again, it was just a lake. I was a kid after all, and probably a pretty dumb one too. I continued playing with my brother, and I felt something almost tugging at my foot. It was kind of like a scratching sensation and it got pretty annoying. I was struggling not to go under after a minute, and only I had the ball to keep me afloat. It seemed like I was going to be dragged underwater. I started screaming and called to my brother for help, but he thought I was just goofing around. I started clapping the water and banging for attention, but no one ever looked. Finally, something dragged me underwater, and I could see under there. Whatever had a hold of me was long and white and was continuously pulling me under. It seemed to have weird amphibious-like ears and eyes that glowed a dull red under the water. This wasn't a person or any type of fish that I could see. I pulled to release my grip and I finally did. It was a struggle back to the surface and I swam back as fast as I could. My brother finally seemed to realize that something was wrong. I told my grandmother, and she told me just not to worry, that it was probably just my imagination. I don't know if anybody has had similar experiences in that lake, but every time I think about it, I get the spooks. 
I told my wife the story recently, and she's pretty unsure I countered some sort of being. Whatever the heck that is. Could be an alien. I don't know. All I know is that I nearly died, and this thing was no person that was pulling me under the water. It was some sort of strange creature that I'd never seen before. The night back at grandmother's, we had hot tea. I was wrapped up in a towel, as I was still pretty clammy and sweaty after my incident, and shaking in fear. My siblings sat around me, as if I was some hero, and I retold the story over and over. Maybe I did add some details to embellish myself as a kid, but now, I see it for what it was. You can see the lake from my grandmother's house. It's like a deep white pool of black liquid at night, and sometimes, the moon shines over it, and it looks quite breathtaking. I had the craziest idea to go back to the lake at night and see if I could see anything, but my brother luckily talked me out of it. That night, I had finished my hot tea. I pulled back the curtain and looked down at the lake. I could have swore I saw something popped up and was looking at me, but all I saw was a dark silhouette, a shadow. I continued staring, but what I spotted or at least what I thought I spotted, seemed to sink back into the deep of the lake. Anyway, the next summer that I went back to her house for the summer, I stayed out of the lake because I remembered everything that happened last year. I sat with my grandmother and read books and just told her I wasn't comfortable swimming. She thought that was odd. What was scary though, and this just disturbed me, it left me with a pit in my stomach. I spotted the face of a kid on a roster near the lake. I walk up to the poster and saw a little kid. He was seven years old, and the sign read something like Corey Harrison, I think was his name, presumed missing. The date was six months previous, and I just looked back to the lake and thought to myself, what if? To this day, I don't know if I spotted some sort of creepy creature or maybe just a giant salamander or what. But whatever it was had a firm grip on me and was pulling me down deeper towards the middle of the lake. And somehow, by the grace of God, I broke free. Hi, my name's Julie, and I have a story that dates all the way back to when I was going to high school with my close friend Leslie. This was nearly 30 years ago Right now, I don't have time for BS, because of the whole quarantine and just, well, I kind of have a semi-important job. I work as a lawyer at a law firm in Texas now, so I really don't have time to BS things. So keep in mind that this story did happen. We were both at my friend Leslie's house. At the time, I believe we were studying for our SATs, and we were both at my friend Leslie's house. In the basement, actually, if I can remember correctly. We saw something, though, outside. Something large, with emerald green eyes, if I remember, and it had weird, long ears that drug behind it. Its body was white, and it appeared to have several legs. It looked right through the basement window at both of us, and we both screamed and ran away, up the stairs, up into the kitchen. I remember how terrified we were, we both even cried. But then my friend Leslie began to get really upset at me, thinking that this was a prank that I was pulling on her. I tried to assure her it was no prank. She claimed to have saw through me and was convinced I was lying to her, pranking her. But somehow, after some time, I convinced her that I wasn't lying and that we both did see something odd, whatever it was. It wasn't normal and it wasn't a natural animal. This thing was spooky. I'm a little embarrassed even now to admit this, but I have a real interest in the supernatural and things that are normally scary. I thought maybe you'd be interested in to hear my story. Although I wish I could tell you what it was we saw. All I can say was it wasn't natural. Was it a ghost? No. It was some sort of living creature. It was flesh and blood, whatever it was, but it had a very scary face. It was definitely something really weird. Anyway, not long after, my friend moved away, just a few weeks or even a few months after. 
and we never really got the chance to talk about it, nor did she ever really want to talk about it afterwards. I think it scared her far more than it scared me. Anyway, I think for me, it kind of sparked my resurgence into the paranormal, as even as a kid, I always found that stuff interesting, but kind of lost interest in it for a while, until that happened, which scared the daylights out of me. But then after that, I kind of got back into it, and even now thinking about it, it definitely was some sort of cryptid being. Anyway, I'm glad I can share my encounter with you.